Welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. I want to talk about cutting a slot inside steel tubing using the milling machine. There are other techniques you could use to cut the slot, but today I'm talking about a milling machine. And what we need to be aware of is the manufacturing process of making square tubing like this and also round tubing is very similar. They start out with flat material and then they bend and bring it around and weld it. And here you can actually see inside the welded seam. And on the back side, you see it as just a discoloration or a line. And because of the forces that it takes to bend the steel and manufacture it, those forces are still in the steel and want to go back to being flat, believe it or not. So when we start cutting on this, the forces that are all bound up are going to be released and we have to be very careful to control those to make sure they're favorable to us. Now one way we want to do that is how we clamp it in the vise. If I were to lower this down deeper into the vise, I would end up pushing this together. So as I make this cut, this top piece is going to push in and collapse. I'm going to end up with a thinner edge here than is desirable. So what I've done is I've raised it up on parallels. So now most of the force is on the bottom side of the steel pushing it in. But also remember that steel is getting pressure against it and it wants to pop up or pop down. So you need to be aware of that. So you've got to be careful how much you clamp. You do want to make sure it's tight. You don't want this moving around. But if you're having problems, Think about how you're clamping it and is it too tight or do you need to set up some sort of extra vise on here or do you want to put a piece of steel inside here to control that energy that's being released as you cut. Something else we want to talk about is the geometry of the cutter. Is this is a two flute cutter. If I ended up having vibration problems, I would probably go to a four flute cutter and see if that can't change that frequency coming through in the cut. Also I could change of course my rotation, the speed of the cutter. I could go to a larger cutter. So if you're having a vibration issue, be aware that you may be able to just change the cutter and solve that problem. Another thing we want to be aware of as we're pressing this in and cutting, we're going to have a challenge with it right here at the vise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here, cut, and I'm going to stop, take the cutter out, bring it over, bring it, push it back into the steel, bring it over, stop, up, down, and I'm going to do that on all four corners here. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to control that steel from pressing in by doing that. And later on, we'll clean those up and take those out. So it's a pretty easy process. But these bridges to me are really important because I've tried to do it before and I learned this by, of course, mistakes. And hopefully I won't show you any of those mistakes today. So I'm going to cut this out, show you this is, this steel here is three inches wide and inch and a half thick. And I think it's one eighth inch thick wall or 1.125 thickness. So let's get cutting and see what happens. You can see how I left spaces here. Now, I, I will admit I did make a mistake. I started daydreaming and forgot that I needed to stop here and lift up, but I still got a bridge in here. It's a little off. I would have rather had it right at the jaws, but I think I'll survive. This is tubing and it's not super critical. Now, 
this was, I needed to extend the steel out, so I actually welded a piece on here. So that's why this has already fallen out, because there was no reason to weld over here if I knew I was going to cut it out later. Let's clean these up. It's kind of up to you. You're going to have to discover what works best for, for how you're doing it. I'm going to come over and I'm going to take off most of this. I'm going to leave about an eighth inch. I'm going to go around to all four, do that, and then I'm going to come in and take out that last little bit. Now I'm going to finish this one out. I'm going, to be allow, I'm going to allow myself to just cut that all the way off. One of the things I want you to be aware of is look at how much stress is in the steel and how much it has bowed up. And this is what we're going to be concerned with. As soon as we cut this, things are going to shift and move. And this may cause us some sort of kickback or grabbing. So we want to be very aware of that. If I wanted to, I could just do a shallow cut on this on the top and just leave a, a really thin um, piece of material under there. But I'm just going to cut in there. I'm going to also cheat the cutter into this side a little bit. So if I need to, I can come back and clean up this edge. I don't want that edge to push over too much. So I'm going to counteract that by bringing the cutter over and hoping I do good. I'm not exactly sure how much. We'll go over, I don't know. 10, 15 thousandths and see how it works. You can see that I definitely had some movement. Now, I'm not going to measure this to see how accurate it is because it doesn't need to be. This is an important piece. I don't have anything that really has to match up to it in tight tolerances. But you can see the changes that were happening, especially with the bowing of this material here. You want to be aware of how things are manufactured and how the stresses are being relieved as you cut them. I hope you guys liked this little video. If you did, give me some thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give me some of those great comments. All right, until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.